Okay, buenos días a todos. Eh, mi nombre es Fabio. Good, good morning, everybody. My name is Fabio Salvatierra. I'm the airdrome official of uh, the South American uh, Regional Office of ICAO. Welcome to this uh, virtual seminar, SMGCS, for the SAM region. That's the acronym, uh, SMGCS, for Surface Movement uh, Height Guidance and Control Systems. Uh, it's an SMIX, SMIX, when you hear this, uh, a word mix that's what we uh, are referring to first of all thank you very much for participating in this event uh, we thank your organizations for uh, their confidence uh, and i'd like to take advantage of this opportunity to uh, give you some instructions before we start our webinar First of all, let me give you some administrative uh, information. Uh, we will, we're applying to last 1.5 hours, including uh, uh, questions and answers at the end of the webinar. This virtual seminar is uh, organized well, as a webinar, so there will be no interaction uh, through the microphone with the participants, but uh, there is the Q&A button enabled, which is uh, down uh, at the bottom of your screen. It says Q&A. You're encouraged to use that button to be able to have uh, access to questions. We'll explain a bit more about that in a bit. As you can see, there is a simultaneous interpretation button available. It's uh, like a globe. Kindly select uh, the language of uh, your preference. You can select uh, the interpretation. Most of the uh, presentations will be delivered in English. And the presentations and recording will be available that link that you see on the screen and it's it will also be available on uh, the south american uh, website uh, on the meetings and events uh, section you will find a link there where we will be posting all the presentations and uh, recordings and then as i said uh, there will be a q a uh, button available when you click uh, on it, uh, you will find an option that uh, says like or like a thumb also. And that option if you just uh, want to ask a question uh, similar to uh, the one uh, already asked by another participant, you just uh, give it a like. And then uh, the question that gets more likes uh, will be the one that will be asked. And if for some reason uh, we are out of time and we cannot have a full Q&A session, just uh, remember that you can send your questions uh, by email and then uh, we'll send your questions to the panelists. And the questions and answers will also be posted uh, on the uh, portal. At the end of the, the event, uh, uh, you will get a, a survey. That is, uh, when we close the session, uh, there will be a window open where it says uh, microphone, Microsoft Azure Chrome. You will find a window where you will be asked to fill in a, a very short uh, survey that will help us uh, a lot to improve. So just kindly take some questions to answer our survey. This is uh, our agenda. I won't uh, take much of your time. Uh, you will also find this agenda at uh, the events website. 
And at this point, I would like to thank uh, the organizations that are supporting this event and mainly our colleagues uh, from uh, ICAO's uh, headquarters in uh, Montreal. We have two colleagues that are participating in this session. And uh, we also have colleagues from CANSO and uh, the European Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, as well as uh, ASILAC, uh, the Airport uh, Council International, represented by the Carrasco International Airport of Uruguay. Thank you very much all for your participation. And without any further ado, I'd like to give the floor to uh, our regional director, Mr. Fabio Rabani. Fabio. Thank you very much, Fabio. Could you allow me to turn on my camera, please? Well, it seems that we have some problem to allow me to turn on my camera. Well, let's see if I can do it now. Sorry, we just had a slight problem with Fabio. Sorry, Fabio, we had a little technical problem. All right. We've been uh, in the pandemic uh, for almost two years and we still have uh, some technical problems. But anyway, thank you very much to all. I'd like to start uh, this opening ceremony by thanking each and every one of you and your administrations for allowing you to participate in this event. No doubt the pandemic takes longer than expected or wanted with uh, uh, impact uh, the professional level on most of us and the aviation industry. However, it has not stopped uh, uh, because uh, we've been using the concepts that have been discussed uh, with ICAO's recommendations for the recovery of uh, civil aviation. And this work is directly reflected on several efforts uh, made by our regional office uh, and our regional projects and so many other efforts that have been uh, made uh, together with your administrations uh, uh, that are participating in this event today. No doubt uh, the uh, idea of uh, building a stronger, more resilient industry is uh, essential, but that is based on the same strategic objectives uh, we've been uh, working on for so many years. No doubt that safety is uh, of the essence. There will be no resiliency if we have no guarantee that the safety aspects uh, have not been uh, uh, affected uh, so as to reduce the uh, levels of operation, those levels uh, that uh, we always uh, want to get that are essential. Uh, the topic of our event is very important. Uh, as you can imagine, the movement and con surface control uh, systems, uh, SMIX, as Pablo said, it's a crude reflect and it's a visual reflection of what coordination and cooperation means within the system of civil aviation visual force mix and you will see 
the advanced SMIX has its own structural concepts going beyond the visual aspect. But SMIX adds, uh, uh, all the issues related to processes, training, uh, infrastructure, systems, to guarantee safety and efficiency of operations on the surface. And this is not a new concept. All airports, uh, to a certain degree, have a system such as this one. But in spite of uh, so many years with this uh, concept, we think that there's room for improvement, both in the documents to establish the processes, but also uh, in uh, the way to build these processes uh, in cooperation with other agents from other sectors. This event reflects uh, that importance. We have uh, airport operators, uh, navigation service providers, and it is uh, of interest to the air operators to guarantee uh, safe uh, service operations. And that is why we are here at this event, to take advantage uh, of the knowledge, experience, and best practices of the best uh, actors and different actors in the system to generate this joint awareness uh, on the structural importance to strengthen the system within our airports. This is part of the audit process uh, ICAO will have together with the states. And we know that we can improve uh, in this. Then when we get the advanced uh, mix uh, concept, uh, all the concepts uh, evolve uh, to where med conditions, uh, responsibilities, the way to communicate uh, changes a lot. So here in this event, uh, we will get more clarity about this. So it's very important to work on all this jointly. I won't take more of your time, but I would simply like to encourage you to take advantage of this event. And I would like to thank EASA, CANSO, ASLAC, uh, uh, through the Carrasco Airport, our colleagues from HQ that are here participating in this activity. It's supported uh, through the uh, RLA 901 regional project. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Fabio. And thank you to all the South American team. Uh, just be uh, active in your participation uh, so as uh, to have a more robust uh, system. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fabio. Uh, regional director. I would now like to uh, give the floor to R.C. Raman uh, from uh, uh, HQ Montreal to deliver the first presentation. Do you hear me? Si te escuchamos, R.C. Adelante, gracias. You could see my screen? Yes, R.C. Okay, thank you. A good morning and good afternoon. Yes, Sorry. we can see your screen. Okay. Well, good morning and good afternoon to all of you, wherever you are from. My name is uh, R.C. Raman, the technical officer responsible for aerodrome operations at ICAO Montreal office. First, I would like to share my appreciation to the ICAO SAM office for taking this topic of SMGCS and having a webinar on this. It is. Uh, kind of a gray area as mentioned, and it is an important topic to be discussed. My heartfelt appreciation to ICAO Sam office for that. I'm not going to talk anything new as the title says, it's just about setting the scene to understand the basic SNGCS provisions from ICAO. It is something which we all know I'm going to talk to so that when we get onto the discussion, we are all in the same page. We know what we are basically talking about as far as what SNGCS is concerned. So it's going to be pretty basic and what ICAO provisions are as far as SNGCS is concerned. So going on into the presentation, what are the ICAO regulations? I would like to highlight only the three first things which have been there in the slide. The first one is something which we all of us know. It's NX 14 volume one, which is on aerodromes. There are several SAPs on SMGCS and ASMGCS in NX 14 volume one. And NX 14 volume one is something like a Bible for most of us and we would have gone through that. Let's see about what are there in the next 14 volume one. The next one is a bit of an old manual, 
It's manual on surface movement guidance control systems, SMGCs or SMAGs as Fabio calls it, which is DOC 9476. This is, we are trying to upgrade this particular manual and because of COVID and related things, there's a bit of a delay in it. There is going to be a work on this and uh, this is an important manual on SMGCs. The third one is a manual on advanced surface management movement guidance control systems, ASMICS or ASMGCS manual doc 9830. So basically for the purpose of aerodromes, these are the three important manuals which we need to know about and we need to look, look into. There are several other documents in which SMGCS or ASMGCS have been referred to. Say for example, the PANS aerodromes, doc 9157 part four, ATS air traffic services planning manual, so on and so forth. So there are several, the, the idea is that there are several places that ASMGCS touches upon when it comes to the ATS part of it, or when it comes to the aerodrome part of it. So, but for the purpose of our discussion in this particular session, it is these three first man things, that's Annex 14, the manual on uh, SMGCS and Advanced Surface Movement Gain Control Manual. These are the three things that are very important for us. Going forward, there's always a question, what is this SMGCS? There have been several questions, is it, there are a lot of complications. People think it is an SMR, it has got to do with an ADSB, it has got to do with moving maps, it has got to do with go green concepts, so on and so forth. But in its simplest way, the definition is as follows. It consists of provisions of guidance to and control or regulation of all aircraft, ground vehicles, personnel on the movement area of the aerodrome. It is pretty simple. You need to provide guidance to, and there should be some control of the traffic. Guidance, we do provide even with visual aids, with markings, we have all these things. So in a sense, SMGCs is something which has been practiced at most aerodromes. And control of, yes, we do have control through air traffic services or through a uh, aerodrome control tower in which the surface movement control is being carried out. So these are, in, in, its, in its simplest definition, it, it is about providing guidance and control of the movement. But the most important thing here to notice, it is not just the aircraft, it is also the vehicle and the person in the movement area of the aerodrome needs to be taken into consideration. So there are three stakeholders, not stakeholders, there are three agencies who are beneficiaries of this particular SMGCS, which is the aircraft, the ground vehicles, and the person. Moving forward, what does Annex 14 talks about this? Annex 14 says, it's a bit of a surprise that it says a surface movement guidance control system shall be provided at all aerodromes which means all the certified aerodromes now shall have an SMGCS. So how do we decide how, what, is, what kind of SMGC should we have? It's a bit of a gray area. Yes, it is, it is. So how do we decide it? It is given in the recommendation 982 that the design of SMGCS should take into account the density of traffic. The density of traffic is divided into light, medium, and heavy based on the traffic conditions and aerodrome may decide whether they want to have what kind of SMGCs they need at what level they want it. And similarly, under visibility conditions, the visibility conditions are also divided into three categories. So they can decide taking into consideration what is the visibility condition under which this aerodrome is going to operate based on which they can decide up to what level of SMGCs, what types of facilities that they need to have in their SMGCs can be decided based on that. The other three are also important because pilot is the most important customer here. The need for pilot orientation, the complexity of an aerodrome layout. If the aerodrome layout is a bit complex with crossing taxiways and several other uh, crossing uh, taxiways crossing the runways, then you need to have an SMGCS. And also the last one is again, the movement of vehicles, depending on the amount of extent, the number of vehicles you are operating in the movement area. So based on these things, these are the provisions given in an export. I'm just, showing the tip of the iceberg. I'm not getting the details because it's just a short 10 minutes presentation. The idea is to show that NX14 mandates SMGCS at aerodromes, which means we are already having it. SMGCS includes visual aids, procedures, communication systems, so on and so forth. And for the design of an SMGCS, these are the things which needs to be taken into account. Now, who are the key stakeholders? It's quite simple. There are main three stakeholders in the SMGCS. I'm talking about the stakeholders now, not the users. The stakeholders, because the, the aerodrome engineering operations and communications teams are one of the main stakeholders. 
the air traffic control services because they are going to provide the air traffic services to the aerodrome traffic. And the next one is the operators or the pilots requirements because the pilot is the, everywhere, the biggest challenge in the CGCS is about the interface. So once when there is an interface, then only can be functioning efficiently. That is why all these three are the key stakeholders in this SMGCS implementation. Now, going to the key requirements of the SMGCS. Let's look at the general requirement. I've just mentioned it's aerodrome, depending on, it's a bit of a, 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 a critical question, whether it's aerodrome or the state or the, or the ATS service provider who provides this, but the general requirements are as follows. We need to understand what are the communication capabilities required, the visual aids, which you already talked about, the markings, the signages, so on and so forth, and the procedures. It is not just enough to have the visual aids. It is about how these visual aids need to be followed is important. And the most important thing when you look at the general requirement is the compatibility between various elements, because an air traffic controller may have a user interface, but that interface should be compatible with that connectivity which you have on ground to give him an indication that this particular signage is flowing or not. So this kind of a compatibility or the SMR related interface with the ATS service provider needs to be compatible. So this compatibility between various elements is very important. And the other thing which is very critical is about the meteorological conditions, the weather forecast, and what kind of weather conditions under which the uh, SMGCs is going to be operated and the workload on the users, because you cannot give too many user interfaces and put the uh, user under, under tremendous workload. So workload requirement is also something that needs to be looked into. So these are the general requirements which can be done by an aerodrome or the state or by the, uh, by the ATS service provider, depending on the model of operations they are having. The next key requirement is from an air, tra aerodrome air traffic control service perspective. For them, for an air traffic controller, the most important thing is to identify the position and the progress of an aircraft or a vehicle in his area of jurisdiction. So he needs to know exactly who is it, where he is, and what he is going to do. That is important in an SMGCS. And he also needs to know about the information on temporary and temporary obstacles and other hazards on operational status, elements of the system, and the facilities of appropriate control to be exercised. So these are the things which are key requirements from an aerodrome traffic. Uh, air traffic control service perspective. Now, the main important player here is the pilot. So if you look into what the pilot is required to have, of course, he needs to know his orientation, where he is, guidance and control, that's what we saw. He needs to be provided guidance and there should be control, which is the air traffic control related instructions. So these are the things as far as the pilot requirements are concerned and information on the route to be followed. And when he's going on a route, he needs to know his position along the route, which is following. That is normally provided through the visual aids or, or through other means, through his moving maps, guidance along the route to be followed, and of course, parking guidance for the uh, pilot. And, and in the event of any eventuality, he needs to have warning off. If there is any change in his direction, he needs to be warned off, where he needs to stop and any adjustments on speeds, identification of areas to be avoided in case if there are any obstacles or anything which is being temporary hazards which are there. And he needs to be provided information to prevent collision with other aircraft and ground vehicles or obstacles. So these are the key requirements. We talked about the pilot, but in an SMGCS, there is another component, which is the vehicles, which is very important. So for as far as the ground vehicles are concerned, there are two types of vehicles which normally operate in an aerodrome. One is the emergency vehicle and other is the normal operational or engineering vehicles which are operating on the aerodrome surface area. So for them, they also need to be provided with information on the route to be followed, guidance along the route to be followed, cap capability to locate the site of the, and for the emergency vehicle, they need to know and they need to be able to locate the site of an emergency, especially during low visibility conditions. So this is also an SMDCS related requirement information to prevent collision with aircraft and other ground vehicles. So these are the requirements. So in a nutshell, there is a requirement for a general one, which is the aerodrome. There is a requirement for the air traffic services. There is a requirement for the pilot in command, uh, the pilots, and there is a requirement for the ground vehicles. So if these requirements needs to be fulfilled, then we look into having an SMGCS. 
And when we need review, every aerodrome will have some kind of a master plan or the other. So when the volume of traffic increases, there is always a need to review the SNGCS system or when operations, low visibility conditions are planned in case if there is a new installation which is coming up, a new CAT 3 EV installation or CAT 3 installations, then this needs to be taken into consideration. Or based on the master plan, if the aerodrome layout is changed, new runways, taxis, and aprons, an SNGC system needs to be reviewed there. Now, there have been quite a bit of talk about SMGCS and ASMGCS. What is the basic difference? If you look into it, we saw the, in the definition of SMGCS, it was about guidance and control. But here we have additional things, providing routing, guidance, and surveillance for the control of aircraft and vehicle in order to maintain the declared surface movement rate under all weather conditions within the aerodrome visibility operation level while maintaining the required level of safety. Here, the main thing to look into is that in an ASNGCS, the most important thing is about routing and the surveillance part of it. Here, what happens is that the pilot or the vehicle operator gets a better situational awareness. In the earlier case, it was the ATC who had a better situational awareness, whereas in an ASNGCS, I'm not going to get into the details of what ASNGCS is because of the shortage of time or what are the classifications of it, which may be touched upon by others later on. But the most important thing to know is that it gives a better situational awareness and it's a bit technologically upgraded version of the SNGC part of it. Now, now that we have seen about SMGCS and ASMGCS, I would like to go upon to show the importance of SMGCS as far as ICAO is concerned. If you look at ICAO's Global Aviation Safety Plan, there are five high-risk categories, out of which one of the high-risk categories is runway incursion. Runway incursion, one of the way to prevent runway incursion is through installation of SMGCS. And this is clearly given in NX14 as well as follows. If you look at the recommendation in NX14, 984, an ASMGCS should be designated to assist in the prevention of inadvertent incursions of aircraft and vehicles onto an active run. So it, 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 it proves that ASMGCS or SMGCS is an important tool from a safety perspective as well. The idea of showing the slide is to show that from a, even in the Global Aviation Safety Plan, SMGCS has been mentioned and runway incursion has been identified as high risk category. Because one of the data, if I'm not wrong, IATA data says that there is at least one runway incursion happening every day somewhere in the globe. So ASMGCS is one of the best tools to prevent runway incursion as well. The next thing, now that we have sort saw about safety, if you look at the capacity and the efficiency part of it, we have seen safety now in the aviation safety plan, but if you look at the capacity, if you look at the global air navigation plan, I am not going into the details of it. It's a bit confusing. It may look a bit confusing for you if you look at this particular slide. All that I would like to highlight is surface surface movement in as is it's one of the thread in the global air navigation plan. In that particular thread, there is something called as different blocks. All that I would like to show is that for surface movement or surface management, in this particular block, if you look at it, all that it shows is something which is related to SNGCS. If you look at it, look at the first one, basic ATCO tools to manage traffic during ground operations. It's a basic communication tool that we talked in SNGCS. Comprehensive situational awareness of surface operations. It's also SNGCS. So if you look at the first top part of it, it's about SNGCS. Whereas if you look at the lower bottom part of it, it's more to do with ASMGCS, the advanced version, like enhanced vision system for taxi operations, enhanced surface guidance for pilots and vehicle drivers, comprehensive vehicle driver situational awareness on the airport surface, conflict alerting for pilot for runway operations. So this is ASMGCS. So in a sense, ASMGCS and SMGCS has been encouraged or has been kind of mandated for surface uh, operations in this particular element of the GANP as well. So in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is that if you look even at the way ICAO was looking at it is that both from a safety perspective and from an efficiency and operations perspective, uh, SMGCS and ASMGCS are very, very important for us. I would like to stop here and thank you. Fabio, over to you. Yes. 
Muchas gracias, RC, por tu presentación. Thank you very much, RC, for your presentation. As you said, it puts us all on the same page to introduce the subject. So thank you very much for your participation. To continue with the agenda, I would like to invite my colleague, Adele Ramlawi, also from our headquarters. Adele will talk about the global and regional implementation of uh, these uh, SMIX uh, requirements. Adele, thank you very much for being here. You have the floor. Creo que, yes, eh, in display settings, creo que tienes que cambiar a... I think you have to change in settings. Display settings y cambias a... In display settings, you have to change to the, on top there, in the middle button, change to presentation mode. So the, the menu the, bar on top. Yeah, in display settings, you see that this- In display settings, settings, you see the menu on top. Then the next one on the right. The next one. The one in the middle. Display settings. Now that we see the presentation, so you can oh, you can select a screen there in the menu that you just press. Maybe. Adele, if you wish, I can I can present from my side. You just let me know. Can you hear me? That's a point. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Display from your side. Great. I hear you now. Thank you. Uh, let, let me do this really quickly. There you go. The floor is yours, Adele. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the Sam region for this initiative. I think it's one of the first that we are doing and you're touching a very important topic. So um, uh, my name is Adel Ramlawi. I'm the standards and procedure officer at ICAO headquarters. I'm in charge of the aerodrome audit and I'm also audit team leader with USOP program. If you speak to the next one, please, uh, Fabio. So just an introduction to our program, it's kind of approach that is based on implementation of structure, structured process and the methodology for planning and preparation and to conduct and follow up evaluation of safety oversight audits in order to determine state's capability for safety oversight. So I, I'm sure most of us know what USOP is and what program is. We are working on it audit area. If we flip to the next slide, please, Fabio. We have eight audit areas, leg org, and among them is AGA, which aerodromes and ground aids. I will not go into details on this one. I know we have a short time, but I will come back to you on that. So our principal is USOP is auditing eight audit area. Two of them are generic. 
one is leg and legislation, and second is organization. The others are for six technical area. Audit aerodrome is one of them, and our references for aerodromes are Annex 14, Annex 19, Pans aerodromes, and all the other aerodrome guidance material that has been mentioned by my colleague uh, Arsene. For that, we follow eight critical elements that you will see in the coming slides. And basically, we have five critical elements that touches the establishment of a system and having the regulation and the guidance material. Then other three critical elements from six to eight are touching the implementation. For our area, we talk about aerodrome certification as critical element six, then surveillance as critical element seven, and the resolution of safety issues based on the surveillance report being critical element eight. In a nutshell, this is what we are doing on, uh, in, in this USO program. So for the purpose of our uh, uh, presentation today, I touched the references that we are following for SMGCS. My colleague RC has explained it in details in his presentation, so I'm not going to repeat it. But for the purpose of our uh, presentation today, I have selected five PQs that are touching SMGCS either directly or indirectly. It's worth mentioning that. Currently, we are having 168 AGA PQ. That is the PQ edition of 2017. In the new edition, which is 2020, which is being implementing end of this year, we have a reduction of this number by almost 15%. So we're going to have something like 143 PQ in the new edition. So that tells you that we have a good number of PQs that are dependent on SMGs. So I did some uh, analysis to see the implementation of these PQs. So the first PQ is 8.203, and it was about having a plan of lighting and signs and marking that really uh, meets the requirement of SMGCS. And I noted that the implementation rate of this uh, PQ was 53%. Um, of course, of those of you who have been exposed to USOB could, should be familiar with the term EI, effective implementation. So the effective implementation of this PQ is 53%, which is quite low in general. The second question that I touched is A205. It's about integration of aerodrome operators, plan of lighting, signs, and marking into aerodrome runway incursion and collision avoidance strategy. And we noted also that the EI for that PQ is 43%. Again, it's quite low compared to other PQs. If I go to the next one, we go to 8.209. And here you have effective implementation of 52%. And this question is about if, this, if, if the state ensures that aerodrome operator comply with the regulation for provision of fixed variable messages, signs taking into account the service movement guidance and control system. Again, the EI is not high enough. So my next question is at 2.15. And you will have kind of surprise here because this question is about selective switching of stop bars and taxiway center lines using the SMGCS. And if the state ensure implementation of such requirement, the implementation rate of this PQ is quite high, 83%. But 
since switch uh, stop bars is not used at all aerodromes, so applicability rate is not that high. The question is applicable to only 32%, but the implementation of it is pretty high. I'll go to the next question and I'll tell you my interpretation of these figures now. So the last question that I'm quoting here is 8.221. And the, state, the question is about if the state ensure that aerodrome surface movement guidance and control system is designed to prevent inadvertent incursion of aircraft and vehicle onto at active, active runway or taxiway and the collision as part of the movement area, taking into account the elements listed in Annex 14 volume. So the percentage here is very low, 43%, but the applicability is very high. It's applicable anyway. So my interpretation for that, as RC mentioned, SMGCS is not one element, it's composition of so many. And the fact is, most states do have some sort of SMGCS without probably realizing it's SMGCS. For example, okay, they have the signs well set and probably reviewed based on the visibility and the traffic density and the aerodrome complexity and they have well designed signing system and marking and lighting system, but they don't refer to it as probably SMGCS. So yeah, the low rate is, the, the rate is low, but in brief, it is not really, this is the fact. So perhaps it needs more recognition from our colleague at the aerodrome operation realizing that yeah with what we are having we have some sort of SMGS and we do need to go for a comprehensive study of SMGCS to make sure that we are meeting all requirements together. So it's not going to be very complicated to implement SMGS even based on what you have in your airport today but it's very important to take into account all the account mentioned by my colleague RC in the previous presentation. So in a nutshell, I was, this is what I'm giving you a message. Partial implementation of SMGS is not precisely affected or reflected in the USO results. I'm sure if you do that, we will see a very much higher rate of SMGCS implementation without having to invest a lot in the infrastructure that we are currently having. By this, I conclude my presentation and thank you so much. Gracias. Muchas gracias, Adele. For thank you very much, Adele, for your presentation. At the end, I'll send you a question from the audience, or maybe I can ask you now. I don't know if that is uh, possible. The That's figures okay. that you showed are figures uh, for the whole world, the percentages that you showed. It's uh, global figures or only for the SAM region. I understand that these are global figures and that the SAM region is a little bit above the average, but I wanted to know if the figures were global figures or of the SAM region. Adele? Thank you, Fabio. A very important question and a valid one. Thank you for asking that one. The fact is that me at headquarters, I look at it from the global level. Uh, so these are the international level. Perhaps the SAM region level, levels could be different. I did not look at it, but uh, I'm looking at it as a general perspective. And what I have mentioned, it does not apply only on the SAM region. I think most of the seven regions that we're having at ICAO, we are having similar issues. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, Fabio. Adele. Thank you very much, Adele. The same 
for the question, we can get the figures uh, for the region. The last time we reviewed, they were a little bit above the global average, but uh, there are several challenges on that uh, topic. Very well then, let's move on to our next uh, presentation. Once again, thank you very much, Adele. And uh, 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 our colleague Vasileos Stefanioros from EASA will share the European experience, not only on the SMICs, but also his, its advanced version. Vasileos, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning to uh, everyone. Uh, I wish to thank the uh, IKEA office for inviting uh, EASA for uh, this event. Uh, maybe Fabio, you can uh, put the, your, the presentation on the screen because I think I'm going to have the same problems. So if it is okay for you. Yeah, we'll do it. Yes, yep, bear with thanks. me a minute. Yep. So, no problem, give me uh, <laughs> just a minute. Yeah, so uh, my name is uh, Vasilio Stefanioros, working for European Aviation Safety Agency. I'm senior expert uh, in the aerodromes. Uh, I'm also a member of uh, IKEO Aerodrome Design and Operations Panel. And um, I, I consider myself very lucky for leading the job card on the development for SARPs, uh, of SARPs in um, Annex 14 for ASMGCS. So I will try to give you uh, an idea how we think about ASMGCS SMG and ASMGCS in Europe. Next slide, uh, please. So the first thing is what is uh, SMAKES? And uh, there are different uh, ideas. First of all, for the SMAKES, we don't have an official IQ definition. And uh, at least in the EU, we came up with uh, some guidance, which is based on IQ document 9476, the SMGCS manual, where as also uh, RC said, the uh, SMAX is uh, an appropriate combination of visual aids, non-visual aids, procedures, control, regulation, management, and information facilities. And this is what we provide to uh, our states and to, uh, the, to the aerodromes. And then in the, AS, in the ASMGCS, uh, also as RC presented before, we have a definition of uh, ASMGCS included in the IKEA document 9830, uh, uh, the ASMX uh, manual. And uh, there we have uh, also the routing, the guidance, and the surveillance function included. Uh, next slide. So for the, how we understand the SMGCS in Europe, uh, we consider the combination of visual aids. And when we mean visual aids, we, we, we refer to signs, markings, and lights. Then we have the rules and the procedures how we control the aircraft and how we control the vehicles and also non-visual aids. And I put there the surface movement uh, radar with a question mark because, uh, well, in some cases it may be needed and in other cases it may not be necessary if, for example, the uh, traffic in the aerodrome is not uh, heavy or medium, or if you can uh, solve the, um, the, 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 the issue with uh, procedures. Uh, and that was in the past. Uh, our experience uh, is now that we don't have many airports, at least in the EU, which are using SMR. The majority of them, they are moving towards to ASMGCS, which I will refer later on. Next slide, please. So when you get the question, do we have an SMGCS? Yes, every airport in the world, they have an SMGCS. Because every airport we know has lights 
well, if they operate during night or during uh, reduced visibility conditions, but I guess they have signs and markings. And this is part of the SMGCS. And of course, they have procedures. Even the simplest airports in the world, they have procedures how to handle and how to control the aircraft on the movement area and how to uh, control the, the vehicular traffic. Even if it is a simple traffic, a ve one vehicle, the access to the runway is also part of the SMGCS procedures. So everything is there. So nothing new. Uh, but what is different is the level of the complexity. Uh, so you need to consider the aerodrome design characteristics, the operational meteorological conditions, and also human factor principles. So every airport has an SMGCS, but the big airport is more complex and uh, a small and simple airport, it's very, it's very simple. And what is very important is the need to coordinate with air traffic services. Because the majority, in the majority of the cases, they have the control of the, no, they have the control of the aircraft in any case, but also in many cases, they control also the uh, vehicular uh, traffic. And uh, well, it's not in the presentation, but at this point, very, very important is the role also of the local runway safety team. The local runway safety team is not uh, something new. It was in the um, uh, IKEA documentation for many, many years, but, uh, but very recently it has been included in PAMS Aerodrome. So in the development of SMGCS and in the procedures, it's very, very important to have also the, uh, the participation of the local runway safety team. Next slide, please. So, we as uh, EASA and uh, our member states, when we, we, when we go to an airport and uh, uh, it was part of the certification process, uh, what we check? First of all, we need, we need to check the visual aids and uh, we need to make sure that they comply with uh, our certification specifications, which is nothing different from what is in Annex 14. So what is included in Annex 14 is transposed into the European uh, regulatory framework. So we need to check that all the signs are there in accordance with the visibility conditions that the aerodrome operates, the, the markings, everything is there. For the non-visual aids, I think for, uh, for we, 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 we still have the requirements for the um, SMR, for operations below RVR 350. And, but I can tell you that uh, all the airports that they are uh, operating in Europe below these um, uh, visibility conditions, they have an ASMCCS in place. And um, uh, we need also uh, SMR uh, at higher RVR values if traffic flow cannot be maintained by alternative procedures and facilities. And uh, well, normally the case is that they have uh, quite a number of procedures to uh, handle the traffic. But it's not only the visual aids and the non-visual aids. What is very important, and it becomes very, very important, uh, even at smaller airports, are the procedures. And uh, first of all, uh, we are talking about low visibility procedures. So if you have an airport which is operating at RVR below 550 meters, then of course you need low visibility procedures. And uh, in Europe, we went one step further uh, where we don't have only low visibility procedures, but we have also what we call reduced aerodrome visibility procedures. So you are above the low visibility, but still you apply some uh, specific measures. If for example, uh, the visibility from the tower is not very well, uh, so you, 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 you need to do something more. Another thing is are the standard taxi routes for complex aerodromes, because the standard taxi routes are published in the AIP and uh, they reduce the, uh, the load on the uh, frequency. So this is something that we have included in our regulations. 
the vehicle uh, driving rules, how we control the vehicles. It's not only the communication when you are approaching the runway or you are on the maneuvering area, but also how you uh, drive around the apron, how you cross taxiways, uh, which are passing through the, the, the apron. So you need to have driving rules. Communication procedures. This is also an, an, another important thing that I think that, that this has been mentioned also by RC. You need to have established procedures. What are the frequencies which will be used? Are these frequencies published? Uh, the vehicles that they go on the maneuvering area, are they using a different frequency? Uh, these things are very, very important. For example, in Europe, we are working towards the concept of triple one, the one uh, runway, one frequency, one language, which is something that we are working on because we consider it as the, the safest uh, uh, practice. Uh, also, we uh, are discussing that we have procedures about the operation of transponders, especially if you have an ASMTC and you have surveillance. The transponders are very important for the uh, system to uh, identify the vehicles. And uh, now we, well, very lately, we have included in the regulations the obligation of the aerodrome to publish these procedures in the AIP. Another thing which is very important is the operation of stop bars. So, uh, well, we have some uh, aerodromes which they are operating the stop bars 24 seven, others which they operate them during uh, only low visibility procedures. Uh, so we have all these things in our uh, uh, procedures, which are equally important as the visual and the non-visual aids. Next slide, please. So, about the ASMCCS, how we are working with this? Well, in Europe, well, we're not such a big uh, continent, uh, and, but we have a lot of hub airports, and we have a lot of traffic, uh, and we are trying to minimize delays, especially if you are operating in, uh, uh, well, in weather conditions where the visibility is not very good. And if you want to minimize delays, because especially on the ground, you need to keep, remember the definition of the ASMTCS, because you need to keep your capacity. So a decision has been taken at EU level <laughs> that 18 aerodromes in Europe are obliged to implement ASMTCS. So these are the hub aerodromes like uh, Heathrow, uh, Paris, Charles de Gaulle, uh, Schiphol, Madrid, Rome, 18 airports. So these airports, they have to implement. And when we are talking about ASMTCS, we have specific objectives. First of all is to enable ATCOS to prevent hazards and incidents when we have errors, operational errors, or deviations from air traffic controllers, flight crew, or vehicle drivers. This is the first objective. And the second objective is to detect and alert conflicting ATC clearances and deviations. So this is the, 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 the system that we have in place. Next slide. And as I said before, we have the conflicting ATC clearance. This is what we are looking for. The conformance and monitoring of alerts for controllers and runway monitoring and conflict alerting, especially to prevent runway incursions. We are still far away from having the uh, routing and the, uh, the routing function as an automated function because the ASMTCS, it requires, first of all, high level of automation. It's not a system that, well, it's, you can build it overnight. You need to have a lot of systems uh, integrated into one 
And for example, you need to get input from electronic flight, uh, flight strips because the electronic flight strips is from where the controller gives the clearances. We have the integration with flight plan and surveillance data. The output of the system is cost. The airfield lighting system, imagine that you need to control all the lights on the maneuvering area, for example, the uh, taxiway center line lights, the stop bars, all these things are at the end of the day. And when you have a fully automated system, these are controlled automatically. And another thing that you need to be connected is with the aerodrome operational database, because at an aerodrome, and most of you, and you are working at an aerodrome, you know that you have parts of the aerodrome that for some days are not um, in operation, you need to change things. Uh, so all these unav unavailabilities needs to be included in the system. And also you get information about stunt allocation, uh, other restrictions, all this information needs to go through the, from the aerodrome operational database into the ASMTCS. Next slide. So there is a, a lot of documentation uh, behind. Uh, so apart from the IKEA documentation, the, the, the Annex 14, we have the PANS ATM, which includes also some procedures about the, uh, how you are using surveillance, how you give the clearance, and the two manuals for the SMGCS and the ASMGCS. It's uh, worth looking into IKEA Europe Document 13, which is a European guidance material on all weather operations at aerodromes. In Europe, uh, we have also the regional supplementary procedures. It's included in IKEA documentation 7030, where you will find some procedures about ASMTCS and also about ASMTCS. And if you want to look into um, if you want to look into the different uh, technical standards. Apart from the uh, IKEA document 9830, which is back dated back in 2004, we don't have any other documentation. And uh, we are working in Europe, I think since 2010, to develop uh, standards, technical standards for ASMTCS. And this is done under the Euroca, it's called European Civil Aviation Equipment, it's, a, it's an organization which develops technical standards for ASMGCS. And currently we are working on the fourth edition of the document. The document is ED87, where we are drafting the standards for uh, routing and guidance uh, function. And last, if you want to have an idea about the, uh, the European regulation and the functionalities of the ASMGCS, uh, I advise you to have a look on the regulation uh, 116 of uh, this year, where all these functionalities are included uh, there. And I think this concludes my presentation. And uh, well, I'm available if uh, you have any questions later on, but also uh, you can find in the presentation my contact details, uh, both myself and uh, our section, which will be very happy to uh, respond to any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vasileos, for your presentation. Quite instructive, actually, because it's not only uh, explaining the basic system, but you've also uh, shown me the advanced system that generates some more and more attention in our region. Maybe not so much because of the adverse uh, weather conditions that some airports do have, but rather because of the increase uh, of uh, traffic and complexity that we see in several airports. So operators and states uh, have to take note of this. Before giving the floor to the next uh, speaker, we have a question in the chat regarding uh, serious uh, 
accidents and incidents statistics regarding the implementation of this SMIX system. SMCGS, sorry. I understand the statistics may not be so easy to evaluate because uh, something can have different origins, but maybe you would like to uh, make a comment about this. Uh, and well, the, uh, the question is open to answer it later as well. Vasileus, would you like to say anything about this now? Yeah, yes, well, the we have a lot of, uh, uh, well, but, occurrences where, well, we have runway collisions, we have collisions uh, between vehicles, but I think what was the, the turning point of uh, dealing with uh, uh, ASMGCS and SMGCS in general was the Linate accident uh, back, I think, in 2001, uh, where uh, for those who uh, are not aware we had the collision at Linate in uh, Milan uh, in very poor visibility condition. The, uh, the, the report is available on the internet. You, you can find it if you just Google it. Uh, the adequacy of uh, lights, markings, procedures, uh, the certification of the aerodrome. And uh, these are things that you see that are very, very important. So the, 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 the ASMGCS is not only to maintain the capacity, but also you, you, you have seen in my presentation that there are tools that they warn the controllers and they also prevent uh, occurrences like uh, collisions on the ground, uh, or if you take uh, a wrong route, all these things. So it's not only capacity. And uh, as Fabio said, uh, maybe in your area you don't experience the, the weather conditions that we experience in Europe, but if you have a complex airport where you have a lot of traffic and you need to maintain your capacity, the ASMCCS is one good way to maintain your operation without degrading your safety levels. So maybe uh, we will have more questions uh, after uh, afterwards, uh, but I think this is my first reaction to this. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Oh, sorry, I'm in English now. Muchas gracias, Vasileos. Thank you very much, Vasileos. In fact, the UNAPTI accident I remember that a colleague from uh, HQ uh, uh, described the event in uh, 2017. Uh, and uh, yes, the report on the accident showed very clearly the lack of uh, markings on the surface and how the S mix, uh, the S uh, MGCS system or its uh, lack of proper implementation had an impact on this uh, accident or incident. Uh, thank you for mentioning it. Let's uh, now give the floor to our next speaker, Shane Campbell with Canso. He will talk a little bit about Canso's uh, approach. Let me thank you, share my screen to show his presentation. So, greetings, everyone. Uh, I'll go ahead and start, Fabio, if that's okay. Sí, por favor, adelante. Ya voy a, ya voy a poner la... Yes, please, go ahead and uh, slowly, okay. please, so we can have the interpretation. Sure. So, greetings, everyone, and uh, thanks to ICAO for inviting me to participate in this event. As mentioned, uh, my name is Shane Campbell, and I'm the safety program manager for CANSO. As such, I oversee the strategic direction of CANSO's global safety program and support regional safety needs for all CANSO regions. 
I manage the daily operations and activities of the standing committee and its work groups, provide leadership and direction to assist it in achieving CANSO safety objectives. I also serve as a focal point on global safety matters and coordinate with industry and regulatory organizations on behalf of CANSO. Next slide, please. So in preparation for this webinar, I did a bit of research on SMGCS, as I always like to do before giving any type of presentation. Now, while there is limited information on SMGCS available via Google, for instance, most of the info I found was on advanced SMGCS. So when we had a planning telecon for this webinar, I asked about should I tailor my presentation to the A SMGCS or the more basic SMGCS? And I was reminded that we really need to start from the beginning as we have many attendees in various places along, let's say their SMGCS implementation journey. Well, I thought this was a, I thought this was a great point. And so I immediately reached out to my network of experts to gain more insight on SMGCS overall. Interestingly, what I found was several former ATCOs familiar with SMGCS albeit the advanced version. A couple of my colleagues had some really, how should we say, close calls uh, using it, the advanced SMGCS, which I believe are pertinent to this conversation. Now, please keep in mind, these were former ADCOs that were actually working traffic at the time of these occurrences. And so knowing them for a while professionally, I would consider them reliable sources. And by the way, these first couple of events did not happen in the United States, but rather are other parts of the globe. So my first contact came back and uh, asked, first asked me the question about collaborative approach portion of the title of this session. He asked, do you mean working with the airport and ANSP or maybe even the airlines to procure, implement and use SMGCS or do you mean how it's collaboratively used on a daily basis and part of ACDM, for example? As you might notice with the ACDM reference, he worked at a large airport, a larger airport. He then he went on to explain a case study about an incident where a grass cutter narrowly avoided getting killed when a flight landed and the wing passed directly over his head and the engine pod came within a foot or two of his arm. I found that interesting as well as the question about the collaboration, i.e. With, with other stakeholders and with other systems still. I, I found this an interesting question. So my second contact worked in an airport that was uh, uh, ASM GCS level four, which means the system provides conflict resolution for all conflicts, keyword being all, automatic planning and automatic guidance for the pilots as well as for the controllers. Basically, a follow the greens scenario. There were more than a few occurrences where they had full follow the greens and cat two, three conditions and had significant runway occurrences. Of course, investigations were done and ultimately, these events were attributed to different parts of the world encouraging crossing of stop bars, which no size of a red light will stop. Please keep in mind that this was a few years ago, and so the hope is things have progressed since that time. I just thought it might be interesting for this group to hear some actual events using this technology. So not everything was bad for my network of experts. In fact, there were quite a few instances of where SMGCS technologies had actually been very positive and becoming more critical in day-to-day -day ATC operations. There are numerous cases of where the safety tool has helped mitigate the risk of aircraft and vehicle deviations. This has always been the primary purpose of these systems and they have proven themselves as great tools to help improve aviation safety. When these systems are combined with other capabilities such as runway status lights, RWSL, or other safety logic such as the ASDX taxiway arrival prediction logic or ATAP as it's known, the functionality of these systems can be greatly expanded. RWSL and ATAP have taken these systems to a whole different level by either providing visual cues to pilots and vehicle operators when an aircraft may be landing or departing on a runway, or with ATAP, 
helping ATC realize an aircraft is misaligned on landing on a taxiway or landing on a taxiway. By expanding the functionality of these systems, we can achieve greater safety effectiveness at a lower cost than establishing an entirely new system. Finally, these systems are being expanded for use in, re in remote towers, possibly as a separation tool. Traditionally, SMGCS has been an advisory tool in places like the FAA. By adding surveillance systems with on airfield cameras, ANSPs are able to provide separation services in all weather. While the final outcome of the effectiveness of this combination is still being evaluated, they hold a lot of promise. So the title of this session was collaboration. And so I think it's important to touch on this extremely critical path to success. If you look at the FAA advisory circular on SMGCS 120.57B, which is the current version, section six talks about establishment of the SMGCS working group at the local airport level. In fact, it places the onus on the airport operator to ensure this happens. So you could say this is a hard requirement, at least for US airports installing SMGCS. There are a lot of participants listed who should be part of that group. And of course, ATC is part of that, as well as other parts of the ANSP community, such as engineering. These points were touched early on in the, in the first presentation. The key takeaway that I have for each of you is that as ANSPs, you have a responsibility to actively engage and not only the implementation of SMGCS at the local level, but also the continued use and iteration of the technology. Find out if there's something like an SMGCS working group at your, at your facility and start asking questions. If there is no group formed, take the opportunity to establish one. And why is this important? Because it takes every stakeholder to give their perspective on how the system will operate, what procedures will be used, how procedures will be changed to mitigate risk, et cetera. It is a shared responsibility by all stakeholders. Thanks again for the opportunity to speak to you today. And I look forward to the question and answer session that follows. Fabio, back to you. Gracias, Shane. For Thank you, Shane, for your presentation and uh, as uh, we show now in this slide that I hadn't shown before, the key message is collaboration. Uh, Shane, uh, I have a question, but I want to keep it for the end. Robert, do you allow me? In that way, we can uh, ask it together with other questions, if any, for the other panelists. Now I'd like to thank Canso and especially Shana for this presentation. And now I would like to give the floor to our next speaker, Nelson Rosana from the uh, Carrasco International Airport at Montevideo. He will talk about the experience de Carrasco in, in, in este... Carrasco Airport. With, this, uh, with these systems, the airport's approach, actually. He is also representing ACA LAC. He's been uh, collaborating with us in this event. Nelson, can you share your screen? Oh, there you are. Welcome, Nelson, thank you. Yes, I think you can see it, right? Yes. Let's see if it's working. Is it okay? Well, I don't know whether. Well, let me let me try. Go to options. You see it up there. Can you click on it? No, without uh, leaving the presentation mode. Uh -huh. 
Super. Allí ves que hay una barra de, de beber. Uh, do you see a bar that says presentation options or display options? Finalize presentation. Do you see that? Ahí puedes poner duplicar presentación. Creo que ahí está. Ahora sí. Oh, adelante. there it is. Over to you, Nelson. Well, as the office director says, uh, we're still at the pandemic level and uh, we are not getting used to it yet. So good morning to everybody. Thank you, uh, uh, Fabio and Marilena. Uh, ICAO and uh, ACI for this. Uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting them many years ago when uh, he works at the Tucumán Airport. Uh, so we've uh, uh, kept this relationship in time and uh, it's a pleasure for me to uh, contribute with uh, our experience in this region. Uh, the topic of my presentation is related to the operator's experience from the collaborative approach in uh, the uh, low visibility procedure, bearing in mind that our airport is at the south part of the continent uh, and with adverse uh, meteorology with uh, low visibility because of uh, the fog. Maybe, well, let me try to show you uh, some footage. Sorry, let me give it one more try. Bear in mind uh, that this uh, surface movement provides capacity uh, in safety regarding the uh, adverse uh, weather conditions like ours with uh, fog and in other situations, this may be related to sand or smoke According to document 9476, uh, first edition of uh, 1986, a document 9830 in 2004 that talks with the, about advanced systems, uh, sets a simple system made up by the dotted lines uh, or painted lines and signs, an advanced system uh, made up with uh, stop bars and uh, taxiways. Well, our airport is located south of the continent. We have a nearby airport uh, used as uh, alternate airports for Argentina, Brazil, Chile. And uh, it's an airport that has uh, reduced operations, but 98% of uh, flights are international commercial flights uh, operating an average of uh, 60 or 70 movements per day. Oh, there we are, Nelson. Well, I'm sorry, I had a problem trying to show you a video related to the presentation. But anyway, here you see the map in the context I was describing. In Montevideo is in parallel 40 in south. Uh, in the south, we're suffering uh, fogs now. And at the airport, we need to get ready for this kind of situation. That's something important I'd like to highlight that has had an impact uh, on our daily operations. The experience we've had in the certification process of the new Latin American uh, aviation standards uh, uh, together with uh, SRV SOP in 2018, uh, where we got the certification uh, uh, 
after complying with all the standards, uh, having uh, air navigation services according to the recommended standards and methods, and finally, with the uh, personnel that has enough experience and training to perform the functions. Well, while this is true, our airport met uh, all the standards of uh, Annex 14 and other related documents. This uh, may or uh, meant uh, a very important turn in the quality and excellence of our services. So, in the documentation, uh, we had the manual of airdromes and for the purpose of our presentation, for low visibility, we had to prepare pair an operations letter of agreement uh, with the DGCA and the Met Service, both uh, reporting to the state. And uh, that resulted in a good synergy and a very important collaboration approach uh, between the public and private sectors, especially with the NASIA, which is uh, uh, the uh, leader in aviation industry, and we're still working with them in terms of surveillance. All this brought about uh, improvement in our safety system uh, with uh, a sound uh, program. We're getting into phase four now that uh, with which we got the uh, Montevideo safety level. According to document 9830, the advanced system of uh, surface uh, movement establishes uh, reduced traffic density and it has a, a crossed uh, runways and we also have winds uh, coming from different uh, sectors. So we need uh, cross uh, runways, so, but it's an old design. However, for our region it's very important to give it uh, landing capacity. Visibility, it's a category two, where it says that uh, air traffic control cannot uh, uh, control all the traffic in a visual manner because as I said, it has several uh, runways with several taxiways and aprons. In this case, we see a control tower. It's uh, far from the uh, terminal area but to keep a visual contact uh, of uh, the uh, controller to the two uh, uh, runway ends. Our ramp service uh, takes care of uh, the uh, apron service in a very complex scenario, but so far we've been having good results. These are the three uh, actors covering uh, the control tower, the pilot in his uh, aircraft uh, and the a uh, ramp operator. These three actors play uh, a very important role each, and they are very much related to low visibility uh, situations, bearing in mind that the operator is responsible for the inspection of the area of maneuvering and apron, and uh, the same way is responsible to train all its personnel. It's important to get the interface between the air traffic services uh, and apron services, uh, and the latter are responsible for the allocation of uh, uh, providing continuous surveillance of air traffic through uh, good communication. And this is to be ready to keep the right distance and keep the speed. Uh, this uh, apron service uh, and uh, guidance of aircraft is uh, in charge of the uh, operator through the uh, ramp operator. And there's a good integration level between the human part uh, and the machine. Another very important aspect is communications. Uh, control of aircraft and vehicles in the maneuver area belong uh, to the uh, air traffic control of our airport. Now, in the event of low visibility, we have the difference. 
what the controller sees uh, outside virtually and then what well, we see fog and then there's an interface a total integrity between air traffic med service uh, the uh, meteorology service and the ramp service so we see or we get the same information keeping the right redundancy levels and levels of reliability and integrity not only on the med side but also on communications and uh, electric service I want to keep this uh, slide. Uh, uh, actually, it's a phrase that's very important. Uh, and this topic that under these uh, low visibility conditions, uh, this service is very relevant. We need to keep uh, the visual aid uh, and secondary uh, power source of the airdrum in good state. Uh, we have uh, uh, the regulations that separate uh, the allocation of tasks and responsibilities amongst the uh, maintenance personnel and operations personnel. Maintenance plays a major role here for the good state of visual aids and communication so that in the event there is a failure, uh, this may be solved in the allowed times. And especially regarding uh, operations personnel, situational awareness uh, of aircraft and uh, vehicle operators uh, with the proper training, proper equipment and vehicles uh, is of utmost importance for safety. So that's it. And um, I couldn't uh, show you a video, but uh, if you wish, I can try in a few seconds. Thank you, Nelson. I have it here as well, if you wish. I can show it from here. Yes, it would be interesting, Fabio, because in fact, uh, there are airports that do not have this uh, adverse meteorological condition and uh, we suffer from it in winter. It brings about many problems and not only uh, in terms of the operations, but also for the passenger, many delays, many cancellations so i think that the biggest example we've had has been the accident in tenerife which was quite unfortunate with uh, fatalities due to low visibility and uh, lack of communications and uh, the linate because of lack of uh, uh, signaling markings yes i have it on the screen if you wish i can show it Yes, please. We can leave it for you. Instrument approach. Well, thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm at your disposal once again. Thank you very much for the Gracias, offer. Ti, Nelson, por... Thank you, Nelson, for your participation. And it's always interesting to see the video, how in our region we have these interesting visibility conditions. I know some airports that have the same thing, but with rain. So in addition to the increase in traffic and complexity, we, we have these conditions in some of our airports. So with the presentation by Nelson, that was the last presentation for this event. We've exceeded our time a little, but we have a couple of questions in the chat, in the question and answer chat, and I wanted to ask a question to Shane. Shane, are you still there? I am, go ahead. Bob. I'll try to translate the question. Okay. And the question is, 
this system, this SMIX, can be combined with the ACARS, the ACARS of the aircraft, in order to have a more accuracy in the data as a supplement, so that the airlines and the operators may be responsible for the provision of uh, data on position. I understand that ACARS uh, can also refer to ADSB or any other system to provide uh, position data for the aircraft. Shane, yes. do you have any no. comments? Yeah, we can take the question and answer it later if you wish. Yeah, Go ahead, just, Shane. I think, uh, I think more research on that would be uh, uh, beneficial because I would like to talk to some people to get a real world perspective on it. I think that the short answer is it depends on what technologies you have at your disposal in your SMGCS, right? And what level. I would guess uh, coupling with A cars would be more an A SMGCS type environment with the advanced. Uh, uh, but uh, um, you know, I think it's I think it's doable, but it, it's dependent on what you have at your disposal. If that makes sense. Yes, uh, thank you, Shane. And uh, yes, I think that you're right. Uh, we may need some clarification on the question, but yes, um, there is plenty of new technology available uh, with a ADSB data. Almost anyone can have the position of an aircraft from your phone. So it, um, but again, um, depending on the complexity, you will need more robust systems and, and that's something to, that needs to be considered. This event actually is focused only on the basic SMGCS. And the reason why is because if we discuss the advanced version of it, we need a whole new event. And maybe that's, maybe that's something that we can take out from this event is that maybe we can have a separate event uh, regarding advanced NGCS. Uh, thank you, Shane. We took note uh, on the question by Robert. Also, we have um, another question here. Bear with me a minute. Uh, I will switch to Spanish now. Gracias. Uh, Nelson, Thank you, Nelson. This uh, question is for you regarding uh, whether the airport uh, has uh, low visibility procedures uh, that have been documented. I understand you do because of the certification process requires that, but I wanted you to answer the question. Yes, uh, Fabio, I think you've answered the question. Yes, a continuous surveillance uh, with the regulator of the states. So the low visibility procedure is integrated into the documentation of uh, the airdrome manual and it's uh, applicable with uh, the integrity of all the stakeholders. The integration of all the stakeholders. Thank you very much, Nelson. Well, that's uh, the value of uh, these airdrome certification procedures. In that process, the state has to check not only the procedures of the operator, including these procedures, but also to make sure that the operator has uh, the letters of operational agreement, including uh, the letters of agreement with uh, air traffic services, also in the certification processes, when they check the SMS, they assess the different SMS committees, including the runway safety teams, which as Vasileos mentioned, are an important part or can be an important uh, um, element for this uh, collaboration. Well, thank you very much. Uh, for the sake of time, I wanted to leave it there. We've taken note of the questions in order to prepare a question and answer document. If any of the participants still have any doubts, uh, we invite you to share 
their questions through the ICAO SAM at ICAO.int address. I'll put it in the chat so that uh, you can all have access to it. So let me thank you for the support of all the organizations that participated in this uh, virtual seminar. So without further ado, we wish to, to thank you all. And uh, we wish to remind you that there is a survey uh, uh, after we close this session. And in that survey, you have a chance to ask more questions. So there is uh, a space to ask more questions. Uh, otherwise, uh, through the email address. Once again, thank you very much and have a great day.